Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at what's going on in what we call scaling solutions, which is um, just a, a, a way of saying um, uh, uh, game developers using additional blockchains uh, because Ethereum is really congested at the moment and um, gas fees are very expensive. So this has been around really for getting on for a year now that the Ethereum mainnet had just been a kind of a uh, very busy, uh, mainly with DeFi uh, activity and now with a lot of kind of crypto art trading as well. Um, and, and those are very big uh, value items. So people are prepared to pay 10, 20, 30, 50 dollars on a transaction fee. Um, games, clearly, <laughs> um, at the moment, most of the most of the game transactions are, are much smaller values. And so game games have been priced out of the Ethereum uh, mainnet. So what we've seen really is is what we call a, a move to these scaling solutions. Scaling solutions just mean um, a, a blockchain that works with Ethereum um, and is uh, typically uh, will work um, in a different way, have a different consensus mechanic, um, different ways of doing that. But basically, it'll be much quicker and it will be uh, much cheaper in terms of gas fees. It will also be less secure than the Ethereum mainnet. I mean, one of the reasons that Ethereum um, at the moment is so, is so uh, kind of congested is the amount of value going in there is enormous. So, so Ethereum has great security. If you want a 51% attack Ethereum at the moment, that's very expensive. Um, so, so these what we call layer two solutions basically take um, take things off Ethereum uh, so you can kind of do do things fast with them. And then if you want the security of Ethereum, you can then kind of kind of move the the uh, objects, typically NFTs, back to the Ethereum mainnet um, uh, for the security model there. Um, there's lots of different te technicalities of it. I'm not going to go into all those details, even if I could understand them. Um, but this is just uh, a broad overview, really, of what's going on. So really back in the day, like three years ago now, two years ago, three, you know, two, two years ago, <laughs> the, the scaling solution everyone was thinking of using was called a Loom Network. Um, and that was a what we call a side chain. It basically used, used a, um, a kind of technology called Plasma, which came out of Ethereum. Um, and it was using Plasma just to take... Um, uh, kind of traffic off the Ethereum mainnet and, and you you basically ran that on the Loom network and then you could kind of move things backwards and forwards. So Loom in the end decided they didn't want to do games and moved into um, enterprise technology. I think they're doing some doing some medical stuff now. So that was a bad experience for lots of games that were thinking of using Loom, particularly stuff like Axie Infinity, uh, Neon District, some, some pretty high profile games were looking at using Loom. Um, basically when Loom pulled the rug on them, they had to kind of um, decide if they were going to build their own networks, which some of them did, or if they were going to look for another provider. So there's lots of lots of scaling solutions out there for Ethereum at the moment. Um, on the DeFi side, there's a whole bunch of weird techniques called um, roll-ups, there's optimistic roll-ups, uh, ZK, zero knowledge roll-ups. Those are mainly being used by DeFi um, at the moment, and they're still pretty early on. Um, so they're not really ready for deployment yet, although some people are deploying kind of testnet versions of those. Uh, when it comes to games, though, there's one sort of main solution that's taken over from Loom. So that's Matic. Now, Matic is now uh, known as Polygon. They've just rebranded, slightly expanded their kind of vision of what they want to do in the future. But but um, this is just the Matic website. I thought this would be interesting to have a look quickly through, and, and we can see some projects here. Some of these will be um, familiar. So we have Trade Stars, Fantasy Sports Game, Battle Racers, um, De Decentral, Decentral Games is actually gambling. Um, we have Chain Guardians, we have Crypto Warrior Z, I don't know anything about that one. <laughs> we have Zero X Universe, which is actually the biggest game on Matic at the moment. Pretty big game on Ethereum, been around on Ethereum for, for a number of years, um, and basically uh, was priced out of the market uh, last summer. Mo was one of the first games to move to Matic, now has about a thousand uh, daily active, uh, monthly active uh, unique wallets, so the it's not really grown since moving to Matic, but the people who were playing it on Ethereum are now playing it on Matic. Xerox Racers from the same um, team, Xerox Warriors. Um, Spells of Genesis is kind of going across chain, so it's going on lots of different chains um, at the moment. Um, what else we got? Uh, Block Lords, um, Light Trail Rush, um, Eternal, which I think now is, is actually stopped. Um, <laughs> that, that game has stopped development. Blockchain QT is running across multiple chains, including Matic, um, and also for some reason not on here, um, uh, unless I missed it somewhere. somewhere. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Neon District. <laughs> so Neon District is actually one of the biggest games going to be. That's actually now running on 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 Matic, although it's a very um, kind of kind of light mini game that they're currently running on there. So we have a whole bunch of games running on Matic, which is now called Polygon. This is this is just a a kind of off the shelf solution. So this is it. 
a, a what we call, I mean, it's currently actually very much like Loom, it's running the Plasma plasma model, um, and over time it will be running, um, it's going to be testing some of these roll-up mechanics, so so uh, you, you'll be able to use that. You can run your own sort of chains on there as well, you can, there's lots of different kind of functionality you can do, but I think most people are just using it out of the box um, to, to just offload sort of uh, on-chain activity and uh, NFT um, uh, trading as well. So if you, go, if you go to Matic, there's a whole bunch of kind of marketplaces. Uh, that in fact, even OpenSea now is running on Matic. You, you don't really see that from the front end, um, but uh, but they're, they're running some of their um, stuff on Matic as well. So Matic's pretty well, I should say Polygon now. So um, Polygon now is pretty well established, um, although there's no there's not there's, there's no games with like thousands of users on there yet. Um, so we also have here. Um, Ronin, so I say Axie Infinity was using Loom, um, actually deployed all its land on Loom and now has had to deploy, <laughs> to migrate all its land from Loom um, and has now created its own sidechain. So it's called Ronin and basically this is something that it is just, it is just created. So whether that is going to be something people, um, it opens up for other people in the future, I, I think uh, probably unlikely. They basically made, they're basically making a, a blockchain, a, a layer two blockchain that will work with Ethereum because all their um, all their axes are held on uh, Ethereum at the moment, um, but their land is now moving. Uh, land can be now held on the Ronin blockchain. It has its own token, the Ron token. You have to set up a wallet, separate wallet. Should have pointed that out with Matic as well. With Matic, you can use MetaMask, but you have to set up a version of MetaMask um, to interact with the with the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so uh, so there's that kind of extra co kind of complication. You have to bridge between the two. Um, so uh, that's one example. Um, another example here. So this is Immutable. These are the people behind Gods Unchained, um, originally known as Fuel Games, and they rebranded to Immutable, and now they have their Immutable X, um, which they're calling an exchange protocol. Again, this is a, um, a layer two solution for Ethereum. So you know they kind of point out here zero gas costs, uh, set up your own trading fees, um, can handle nine thousand transactions a second supports uh, ERC20, ERC721, so non-fungible, fungible tokens, instant settlements, no reverts. So um, they're using, I think, uh, Starkware is the underlying kind of technology here. That's a that's the technology provider of blockchain technologies and uh, Immutable are building, you know, using their SDK and building a version um, on top of that. Um, and some, some other games, so they're using, they're using this for Gods Unchained. Some other games are also um, uh, gonna be using this as well. So this is more of a kind of platform play where Ronin is just a, um, a specifically designed for, for Axie Infinity, at least at the moment. And then finally, we have uh, this one. So this is Engine, well known in the blockchain game space, been around since 2017. It's Engine Coin, it's doing super well at the moment. Um, um, has a whole bunch of games using the platform, has a whole bunch of NFTs minted on there. Not a lot of activity on their games yet. None of them are really properly completed. Um, but uh, they're really good at engine are really good at providing kind of tech. So the latest thing they're doing here, they just announced it is called JumpNet. So JumpNet again is is a um, their own. It's actually a, a, a private. Um, it's based on Ethereum, but it's basically a private version of the Ethereum blockchain, which is running on what we call proof of authority. So basically, it's not centralized. It, it, it is centralized um, to, to a large degree because you have kind of a set set of validators which run the blockchain. It's not like anyone can set up and, and run a node. Um, so they've just announced this, and the point of JumpNet is that you can um, you can do instant, secure, gasless on-chain transactions of Engine Coin and ERC. So they're doing 1155 tokens. That's just another standard uh, for uh, NFTs. Um, actually, Engine came up with the EA, with the 1155 standard, so they they that's what they use. Um, one of those confusing things we have in blockchain world. Uh, but basically, it's, it's a kind of a, a a advanced version of ERC721 that combines ERC20s, um, so you can do these kind of kind of bundle bundled up uh, NFTs. Um, so they're doing that, um, and that's launching in April. Um, and then they also have their own um, uh, product here, which they're going to put it down. No, they've got it. Um, they've got their own um, uh, solution, which is launching later in the year, called Affinity, which is um, which is which is actually a sort of a cross-chain scaling solution. Um, so instead, so so uh, JumpNet is, is is specifically like a layer two for Ethereum. That's the, probably the best way of looking at it. Whereas uh, Affinity is is a more like a sort of um, a bit like what Polygon, Stroke, Matic are doing, uh, providing a multi-chain uh, solution that can can um, allow people to move things across different chains. And we're seeing a lot of that now, certainly in the DeFi side. Uh, Compound, the DeFi DApp has just announced its its um, its own blockchain which in a similar way is allowing people to kind of move assets between say Ethereum and, and Solana or, or Tezos or all the other different blockchains. And obviously we have Polkadot 
and uh, Cosmos in the in the future as well, which are multi-chain solutions. So we're seeing we're seeing a, a, a big trend generally in in the blockchain world um, towards multi-chain stuff. That's a, still a bit of a way off. What's happening now, particularly on Ethereum uh, for games, is, is a lot of effort into these layer two solutions, which just allow people to um, kind of get a better experience. Uh, Fast transactions, uh, sort of immediate transactions, no gas fees. You, pretty much like the like Web two, um, but it is attached by a blockchain, which isn't as secure as Ethereum, but but can kind of rely on Ethereum for its for its um uh, for its security model, which obviously uh, it becomes important when you start having assets that are worth tens or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, as we now see with NFTs. So there we are. That's going on um, uh, at the moment. A, a brief snap sh snapshot of the technology. Hope that was, sort of stuff was interesting. Um, please subscribe to the channel if it was interesting. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, see you again soon. Mm -hmm.